What's up guys? Welcome back for another build video for the Berserker and I gotta tell you right now this one's a doozy. I'm telling you this one is by far the ultimate leap build that I have come up with and as much as I want to take 100% credit for this I am gonna take 98% because the rest of it goes to this guy unhealthy carrot for giving me the idea when I was getting stuck on how to do this build. Now look, this build is pretty straightforward. It's kind of a combination of my previous first video, Fire Leap build for the Berserker, which is a great build, great starting build to get you into the game, pushing those mythics, getting those gear, and that, and, and you know, kind of getting your feet wet a little bit. But now if you want to push it, and I mean push it, then you gotta go with this build. Now this build takes one, it utilizes one big item set and that set is the moon and sunset both amulet and ring which is crazy overpowered and I've been wanting to do a build around these items ever since I first saw them but I couldn't wrap my little casual monkey ass brain around it because at, at the time I didn't know how to play the game I didn't realize transmutation was a thing in the game and I'll tell you right now, ever since I found out after transmutation, I was like, yes, now I can do a sun and moon build. Then I sat there, just pulling my hair out of my head, trying to figure out how to do it. I was trying to do like these weird dragon breath builds. I was trying to do these weird shout builds and none of it was working until I had the idea. And I'll be honest, this was my idea. Why not just do a leap sun and moon build? Ah. Oh easy as that so easy and with the help of you know unhealthy carrot commenting in the sections which you all should be doing all right i'm looking at you guys you gave me this sweet idea to try it out so i went in worked it uh, worked on it and figured it out a pretty good solid build there is some kinks like the rest of my builds because like i said casual monkey i look at face value and i don't think ahead so without further ado, let's hop right into how this build works, starting off with the items. All right, so getting right into the items, base items first of, like I said previously, this set or this build revolves around the sun and moon set. So, like I said, we're using the Amulet Moon and the Ring Sun. And then for the other items we're using, we're using the full four-piece of the Dragonfire Garb set. Now, the reason why we're using the Dragonfire Garb set is, A, this is a fire build. This is the only fire set in the game for the Berserker that is worth a damn. It's going to proc our explosive maneuvers, making... It's not going to proc. It's going to make our explosive maneuvers do more damage going to do more damage with its three piece also stacking rampage and then rampage on the four piece is going to give us damage reduction which is a no-brainer in anything you're doing especially if you're pushing up those higher mythics now this wouldn't be a leap build if we didn't include brutal stompers now i don't know about you guys but if you're not rocking brutal brutal stompers on a leap build are you even doing a leap build like come on it's a no-brainer and then lastly, for our accessory, this is kind of a throwaway just because, I'll be honest, I don't really know if we're utilizing, to it, utilizing it to its full effect. Now, the cool thing with this item is it reduces the damage taken from staggered damage by 67%. In addition, damage is increased by 20% of the currently held staggered damage. This is great. This is a cool item. Bulgar's Binding is amazing. I think it's cool. However... On our build, with we with the way we currently have it set up, I don't think we're staggering any damage. Therefore, I don't think we're utilizing this amp accessory at all. So right now, it's kind of a placeholder just because of the rune I have on it, and we'll get into that in a second here. So this would be the one item in this build that I think you could probably do without. Try something different. What those other items would be, I have no idea, but feel free to test it out. Give it a shot. Now, let's go ahead and jump into the runes and transmu transmutations. All right, let's take a look at the runes and transmutations of this build. Now, two key runes you have to have on this build 
if you are looking to push higher mythics and survive overall. First one is going to be a boots, which are battle brute boots, greater rune, mobility skills increase the damage reduction by 35% for 7 seconds when used. Now this is crucial. This is giving us way more survivability than anything else on our build and marry that with our main hand, dodge claw, greater rune. Utility skills also restore 12% of maximum health and mana. So not only are we getting more damage reduction, but we're also healing every single time we leap, making us pretty much invincible under given circumstances. Now you still want the, the, the kink in this build is going to be on you and how you play it. You can't necessarily survive everything but as long as you're playing smartly, leaping where you need to leap, getting out of stuff, staying out of stuff that you need to, you are going to do great with this build. So these two are mandatory. And with the current setup I have is on my gloves, I do have a greatness rune. Cap is increased by one. The reason why I have that is I was having some issues with the putting all the runes on this build that I want. With maybe a little bit more thinking and stuff like that, you may be able to get away from using this greater rune or this greatness rune and maybe put on base breaker gloves, which is an amazing rune to have on anything. I then lastly for survivability, we of course are using the Frostborn Heirloom, which I don't need to explain anymore. This item is great. If you don't know about it, learn about it and use it on all your builds. You're gonna save yourself so much time and hassle. It's just gonna be good. And then lastly for survivability, we have flame bound on our chest. All fire skills also cast Ember Shield. Ember Shield increases health regeneration by 100% while active. This effect is tripled. Berserker is on fire. Now this item is great because not only are we getting essentially a free fifth ability that we don't have to worry about casting, it's going to give us a little bit more health, a little bit more survivability, and the damage on it isn't necessarily bad. Now getting into the damage items here, we're going to start off with our helmet. First, we have targeted destruction. Destructive Maneuvers now attempts to target a random enemy within range and will apply a stacking burn effect to all foes struck, dealing 100% of the damage dealt per second for 5 seconds. Great item. I don't necessarily understand it fully myself, but all I do know, and all that really matters, is it does more damage. Making you deal more damage overall, and it's good. It's good. It's a good item. Next on our accessory is elementium stone now just in case you don't know how elementium stone works is if you ever played diablo 3 specifically diablo 3 wizard with the tal rasha's set that's kind of how this works so every time we cast like a frost or a fire skill for for this instance where enemies that take damage from both of those will be taking more damage for seven seconds and that stacks per element that they're affected by so if we can somehow affect them with physical and lightning for example that would be more damage dealt so now this since this build utilizes two different um damage types with it being fire and frost proccing the moon and fire set that's just increased damage that they're taking so we're not necessarily min maxing all of this item but it's still extra damage regardless so it's a good one to have on there and then lastly on our ring we have jeopardy which is cool your critical hit chance is locked to five percent and for each hit you gain 20 percent critical hit damage for three seconds until you reach 10 stacks after reaching 10 stacks your critical hit chance is locked to 100 percent for three seconds after which it resets pies max six stacks per second now you may be thinking to yourself well hold up hold up why do I want to get down to 5% crit chance, lock myself there for the chance of getting at 100%? Well, let me tell you. So first of all, we have a lot of shit procking. We have explosive maneuvers, destructive maneuvers. We have uh, AOE splash damage from our leap, both our leaps. Uh, we have twisters that are spinning out. We have so much shit that's happening on the field at one time that we get up to those 10 stacks instantly and we're getting that 100 percent crit chance which is a crazy so we're doing so much damage within a short period of time that having that five percent crit chance sounds horrible but trust me with this build it works so well 
Now, do we need a lot of damage with this build since we already have Sun and Moon? Not necessarily. So if you're having issues surviving, you can slap a different thing on here like uh, Tasha's uh, ring that gives you resistance to all elements or something like that, for example. Or you can go with something completely different. Point is, I like running Jeopardy ever since I started running it with my builds and ooh, it does so much damage and it is so freaking good. Now, that does it pretty much for the runes. I think a lot of these runes are stuck in place, especially on your main hand, boots, and your amulet. The rest of them, you could mix and match, play around with it, see what fits for you in your current state and stuff like that. You can't go wrong with runes unless you're picking up those three that I mentioned. Um, otherwise, getting into gems. Gems, I feel like they're a pretty simple thing in this game. Build, with this build, you wanna build fire. Yes, we're using the moon and sunset, so we do have frost skills, but our fire is our main damage source. So you want to make sure you're building as much fire damage as possible. Next, I would say go in with maximum health. That way our leaps are going to be healing us even more and more. And then lastly, it's really just building whatever lowest resistance that you currently need to pump up. So like strength or, you know, like physical, fire, frost, lightning, etc. Build up your lowest one, get above there. Otherwise, the rest of it... Pick whatever you want. Like, I think I have pickup radius on mine or bonus XP. It really doesn't matter. Do what you feel comfortable with. Now, that pretty much does it for the items. So, let's go ahead and jump over to the skills and see how this build really comes together. All right, so starting off with our active abilities first, on our left mouse button, we have Arctic Leap, Dragon Leap on our right, and then on our one through one through four keys, we have Dragon Within, Protector, Frost Skin, and Dragmageddon, technically on our fourth key, but if you notice, I have it currently bind to my right key. We'll get into that once we get into the gameplay. Now, with the skill trees, we are dipping into pretty much all of them mainly focusing on dragonkin frostborn guardian and skylord is kind of just some throwaway points that we had to spare so jumping into dragonkin first we're putting five points into dragon heart to increase our maximum health total which increases our healing of course and then we dip into dragon leap because this wouldn't be elite build if we didn't have dragon leap and then we would do fissures for more damage on our dragon leap and then up at the top here, we do go one in, one into Ember Shield and one into Incineration. That way, we can make sure our Ember Shield is proccing from our chest rune. Also, just to give it a little, little something else, and honestly, the Incineration is nice. I don't necessarily see it a whole lot, but it's, it's there, and it can save you in some key positions. Uh, next, we go into Dragon Within because we're using Dragon Leap and Dragmageddon. So that's just to increase our overall damage, which is nice. And then we get Enkindled because why not? Everything's going to be adding fire damage, so it's just overall good. Uh, next, we go Warm Blood, which doesn't really matter, but we, we go into Boiling because fire damage is increased by 30% for the Berserker's current rage. Now, yes, we are dumping our rage quite a bit in this build, but it's nice to have that instant buff of you know like 110 rage whatever 30 percent of that is that's just free damage at that point and then next over to the right we pick up dragmageddon because it's an insane ability that's basically where all our damage is coming from on this build and then we do dragon burn because just buffs dragmageddon overall and then lastly the biggest thing you want to grab is of course explosive and destructive maneuvers with cooling off as well so that pretty much does it for Dragonkin. Jumping into Frostborn here, it's pretty simple. We're not going too crazy with this here. We're putting five into Harden just to reduce our damage reduction. One into Focus for cooldown reduction. And then we're getting one into Rage Release. That way our Frostborn Heirloom makes sure it gets procced when it needs to. Uh, then we're putting one into Crippling Cold. Three into Frostbite. Three into Frost Winds. And one into Biting Winds just to get frost uh just to get our twisters out there because since we are proccing both moon and sun we still want our frost damage to do some damage so might as well have the tornadoes spinning around there dealing some pretty decent damage on top of that and most importantly in this build grabbing arctic leap with chilled 
and then all, finally frost skin the frost skin's pretty good uh improves all our resistances and also it's kind of nice to force some cc overall but biggest most importantly here is picking up arctic leap with rage release otherwise the rest of these you could maybe not necessarily spec into if you didn't want to i do it i find it nice to kind of synergize both with frost and fire making sure our frost when it's up and it's out there it's doing extra damage when it needs to next jumping over to guardian we spec three into endurance three into brute force inner strength and then we go into protector which increases our health by our, the percentage of our current rage and also on use it heals us which uh, we don't necessarily care about that whole, whole lot just because of our leaps healing us for the most part but that can come in handy occasionally but we mainly do it to increase our base health that way we heal more uh, next we go into uh, determination for cooldown reduction and then lastly hunger for more damage when things get lower because essentially once you get up to those higher mythics they're going to have a higher health pool and as soon as you can get them down to that 20 percent health remaining you want them to burn down as quick so you're kind of giving yourself extra damage in the long run and then lastly with this build the way we i spec it out i had about like eight points left over or something like that eight or six points so i kind of spec it into skylord a little bit uh, putting three into rush, which we don't necessarily need to worry about movement speed because we're leaping constantly, so we don't necessarily need that. Uh, and then one into booming voice. Mainly, I just wanted to pick up Draconian agility to increase our evasion by four percent. You could probably get this up to six percent easily, um, but it's just nice uh, extra, you know, extra defensive stuff. I mean, is it needed? No. You could probably play around with this build, maybe pick up something in the guardian tree to maybe somehow work in like a stone physical ability that way you can proc your uh, uh elementium stone even more you know stuff like that point is this isn't necessarily set in stone so it is a little flexible and you can mess around with it and play around with what you think works well all right so jumping into our mastery skills this one's <laughs> uh, mastery skills are an interesting thing for me i feel like they're pretty simple but i don't know if that's just because it makes sense to me right away or if i've been sitting here staring at the mastery sk skill tree for so long that i just kind of know what works so starting off well first of all i do have 420 levels in my on my berserker for mastery so this is quite a bit of points i don't know where you guys are at currently with your levels and stuff like that but i'd say for most importantly starting off with your stuff spec into the dragon kin tree as quick as possible picking up fire damage high pressure too hot to handle draconic healing man on fire total annihilation double destruction dragon can focus and then lastly fire affinity so since this is basically all surrounded around your fire skills and fire damage you want to spec into that dragon kin master tree first and then second i would do your frost uh, your your arctic or frostborn mastery picking up shattering hits this is gonna this works well with the jeopardy uh rune that we have on our ring critical hit damage is increased by 20 percent but since we're hitting that 100 percent crit cap quite often or it's just free damage at that point next we're going into blizzards natural cool dense ice clear mind chill of the north winterborn wide synergy and frost affinity and that and after that it really just comes down to personal preference with the three mastery trees i would spec all the way over to natural vigor if you can that way it increases our maximum health and makes it so we can take a hit and also our leaps deal more healing and then for the mastery three the three other mastery levels i would the, the key ones i would pick up is first hardy increases healing from all sources fortress damage reduction you can't get enough of that fire damage of course and then elementium power which is going to make our fire damage and frost damage get more damage and then, and then a couple other ones here is Challenger, because we're pretty much always constantly fighting crown foes. I don't think, there's only a few packs that I don't fight that are crowned, but since they're not crowned, 
they just pretty much die instantly anyway. So might as well get that more damage towards them. Uh, bling for gem strength, and then big one here, resist all, 25 to all resistances, which is crucial for pushing those higher mythics. And then lastly for your third, um, I'm working on getting my 65 points into my third row. That way I can lock Dragon Envoy, which is crazy since we are Dragon Leaping and our Dragmageddon is our main damage source. That's just a free 25 points. So down here, the key things I'd pick up is Hardy Leech, which, ah, you know, I don't know if it actually works well just because, you know, our leaps do heal us quite a bit. But it doesn't hurt to get, you know, a little bit more healing where you can get it. Uh, next is Elusive, which is 5 to Evasion, which is good. And then lastly, Frost Damage to, again, buff our Frost part of our build. Pretty simple here. I say that quite a bit, but that's just because I kind of feel like it is. So that's pretty much does it for the skill trees. Um, I don't know. There's not a whole lot of wiggle room here in the Mastery Trees. But realistically, this game always surprises me when it comes down to builds. Like, I swear to God... Every time I make a build video, publish it, I get on and start playing again, and I find something that works 10 times better. <laughs> it is ridiculous and it pisses me off so fucking much. But with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into how this build works and how you're gonna play it to achieve full maximum destruction with this build. So the way I kind of do is I kind of get in a rhythm where I do like Arctic Leap, Dragon, Dragon, Arctic, Dragon, Dragon, Arctic, Arctic. So it's like one, one, two, three, one, one, two, three. So you kind of have to, that's where this build gets challenging. It's easy to play, hard to master. So it's going to be up to you figuring out that rhythm, getting that rhythm down, and really just min-maxing your damage output as much as possible. So overall pretty easy build to play so and like i said too this build took me from a casual you know I, I usually play around mythic five and six right as soon as i got this build working it boosted me all the way up to 10 and 11 and if i try really hard i can easily do a 12 or a 13. so this build is crazy powerful i honestly hate that i found this build and i hate unhealthy carrot for for basically showing me this build because i knew the sudden moon build was gonna be disgusting i knew these items were gonna destroy my game because now i can't think of what to do without these items <laughs> so i don't know if it's my fault for not being good at the game and building other builds that are competitive with this or if I'm just missing something, you know, or like, or if maybe this game is meant to be kind of played around that S Mythic 6 tier or something like that, and then there's only a couple builds that transcend beyond that. I really don't know. But I will say it has ruined Berserker for me because now I honestly can't think of a better Elite build to do. So let me know what you guys think. Is this the build? Is this the one that destroys Berserker? Is this the one that makes Berserker? Let me know. Let me know if there's other builds out there that do better than this. You know, give me, show me the love, show me the light. Send me up to Valhalla. Please, I want to be there with everybody else. I'd love to do that. Otherwise, let me know what you thought of the video. Is this better? Is this worse? I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. I barely know how to play the game. With that all being said, thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe to the video. And also, Tell someone you love them. Take it easy.